Okay, so greetings to all. My name is Shubhangi and I'm the executive director of Think Ocean. On behalf of the entire Think Ocean family, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you today who have chosen to join us to partake in the significant conservation about the gender disparity in ocean conservation. It is very lovely to have you all here and I apologize for the previous inconvenience that I might have caused. But yeah, I'm delighted to introduce you to our moderator for the evening, Sofu Koma. Sofu is a dedicated student at Nelson Mandela University and serves as the director of the Shark Research Unit in, um, Unit in Mossel Bay. In addition, she holds vital positions as the African Regional Coordinator for Minorities in Shark Science and Biodiversity Representative and Deputy Secretary for the African Prote uh, Protected Areas Congress Youth. Her past passion for people-centered conservation is truly inspiring and her vision for a future where all voices are heard and valued is one we can all get behind. With her remarkable leadership and expertise, there is no one better suited than Sofu to guide our discussion, uh, discussion today. The floor is all yours, Sofu. Thank you so much, Shubangi. That was beautiful. Um, just to give a little bit of context um, why we are here. So, you know, women have historically been underrepresented in the ocean conservation and um, our contribution and perspective have frequently, you know, been neglected and underestimated. So this gender disparity not only has an impact on the field's inclusivity and diversity, but also impedes uh, growth um, and progress towards effective and equitable conservation initiatives. And secondly, we want to also be able to bridge the gender gap in ocean conservation. In, in, um, it's very critical um, in achieving, achieving long-term development goals for ocean and marine resources. Uh, for example, the Sustainable Development Goal 14 of the United Nations aspires to conserve and sustainably utilize oceans, seas, and marine uh, resources for sustainable development, serve and sustainably use the ocean, seas, and marine resources for, um, for sustainable development. Achieving this goal requires a diverse and inclusive approach um, that includes the full participation and leadership of women in ocean conservation efforts. So lastly, tackling the gender gap in ocean conservation can have far reaching consequences. According to statistics, when women are included in decision making, um, the results are often more equitable, sustainable and successful. Uh, we can strive towards a more just and sustainable future for all if we overcome the gender gap in ocean conservation. So. Our objectives for today is to have a discussion. We don't want to just have a one-sided thing. We wanna hear from everyone and we want to be able to come up with um, solutions from this, from this um, uh, webinar. So two objectives. We will facilitate discussions you know, that promote diversity and, inclusi and inclusivity in ocean conservation. And um, with a particular emphasis on ensuring that contributions and perspective of women are recognized and valued and valued. So please do not shy away from speaking your voice. This is a safe space and um, we, we encourage you, if you are not comfortable with coming in as a face, please do put it on the chat and we will clock that and make sure um, it is counted. And secondly, we want to work towards a more e uh, effective and equitable conservation efforts by addressing the gender gap in ocean conservation and promoting a more diverse and inclusive approach uh, to conservation decision making. So before we start this, I just want to uh, pose a question that we will discuss at the end. Uh, we will write this question on the chat as well so that you can, during this webinar, just uh, think about it. So put yourself in a leader's um, position in your country. Okay? Think about it. So as a leader in your country, with the power to influence policy, what steps would you take to promote gender equality in ocean conservation? We will put that on the chat so that you can reread that question. So I have the honor to introduce our first speaker for the day. And that is Mackenzie Margaret. I hope that I have done justice in saying your name right, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, also known as Mackenzie, super cool name, um, online is a queer 
a science communicator with a background in marine science and conservation. Mackenzie grew up in Hawaii and received her BS from Chaminde University of Honolulu. She has worked in coral conservation, shoreline restoration, and as a marine naturalist. Mackenzie regularly brings her knowledge and background to conferences to fight for equitable solutions for the current ocean conservation issues. She actively voices for more diversity for, for women and the LGBTQ plus community in their spaces. Mackenzie has worked with organizations like Science World on their girls in STEM, in STEM campaign and created scholarships for LGBTQ plus women in STEM. They are honored to be a distinguished speaker at the Gender Gap in Ocean Conservation event. Welcome, Mackenzie, and I hope that you feel welcome. And um, she will be, just quickly, she will be um, addressing the topic of overcoming intersectional challenges in marine science. She'll be discussing the challenges faced by women and LGBTQ plus individuals in marine science when intersecting with other identities such as race, ethnicity, and disability, highlighting the importance of recognizing and addressing these challenges to promote a more diverse and equitable scientific community that is inclusive of all identities. Mackenzie, you can take the seat. Thank you. While Mackenzie is getting ready, I just want to say again to everyone, if you have any questions while Mackenzie is um, presenting, please write them on the chat or write them on your piece of paper. We will have speakers first presenting their work. And after that, we will have a discussion, challenge, uh, discussion um, session. Thank you. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for that absolutely warm welcome. I very much appreciate it. Oh. Are we frozen? I think we are. Hello. Uh, we can hear you. We can hear okay. you, Mackenzie. Okay. <laughs> we froze for a quick second. It's okay. Um, I've also lost my presentation somewhere in this nonsense. Okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mackenzie Marguerite. I'm a science communicator. You might know me online as Mackenzie. I do a lot of uh, ocean conservation work as well well as uh, voicing for inclusivity in those spaces, as was said earlier. Um, if I can find my presentation again, I will, there we go. All right. So uh, if you want to see what, like, what my qualifications, what I do, my background, feel free to go look that up, um, because I was tasked with a very beefy question today that we have just 10 minutes to cover, so I want to get into it. Um, of course, that was uh, that intersectionality challenges in marine conservation spaces and how we can move past those. So one of the things that I get to do now as a science communicator is I go to conferences. Of course, over the pandemic, those were predominantly virtual. Now we are in person. Now we are going to see people. And I believe the gender gap, the lack of diversity can be very much seen at conferences. This is a place where that is amplified tenfold, right? We talk about it, we hear about it, you go to a conference, you see it with your own two eyes. So these two are Impact 5, which took place in Vancouver in early February, and then the one on the right is Our Ocean, which was in Panama um, just a few weeks ago. Now, uh, they, they did fairly good, but you know, we, <laughs> Uh, did have some issues. So Impact 5, which again was in Vancouver, they did a lot to include uh, more women and more diversity. Of course, there's room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. Uh, what we did see a lot of intentional improvement in this space. So when I went to Panama uh, and 90% of the speakers were men uh, over the two, course of the two days, you start to see just how, how back in time the majority of these spaces are. Uh, when you look up, the goal of it all, I'm going to tell you the goal right now, 
The goal of these spaces, the goal that we are setting for is that when you look up at a panel, you might not see one person that represents all of your identity, which is something that you might need to reflect on after this. What are the pieces of you that make your identity, right? I identify as being a queer woman in science. Like those are big things for me. Those are big parts of my identity. So when I look up at a panel, I would like to see that represented. It doesn't have to be one person. It could be two or three people over the course of a panel event, but a couple of people to make up myself. And you should also see that. You should be able to look up and see two or three people that comprise your identity and you feel represented. When you look up at this panel, you might not see that, right? You might not see it when it is all men and one woman talking. Uh, you might not feel that representation, right? And that's that's the goal that we're going for. And that's what we're lacking right now. Um, and these things might seem really passive, right? Like they, you might be able to get away with, oh, they didn't know that there was going to be all men. They didn't talk amongst themselves. It wasn't intentional. It might have been passive. But when you start to combine that with this, these are my badges. My dead name appeared on both of my badges for the conferences. And the places that we hold these massive conferences are unfriendly to minority groups, particularly women and queer folks are not welcome in these spaces. So when you start to combine these things, you start to realize this isn't passive. This is intentional. They are intentionally not including women, minority groups. It's because they want to make these decisions, these policies that don't affect them, right? Those men, those 90% male speakers, there was no discussions at, at, at our, our ocean. There was no you know, room for uh, policy making amongst everybody. It was 90% men, those men making the decisions. Those men don't represent everybody. They are the ones that want that, right? That's why they're doing this. That's why you come to these spaces and they're unsafe for you is so that you don't get to be there. You don't get to make the decisions and they get to make the decisions that least affect them, that they do not have to hold the responsibility for, right? So that's, we see, we can see these issues very brazenly at this point, right? We also do have a decent amount of statistics that back this up. We have quite a bit of statistics at this point for the inequalities for LGBTQ plus folks in professionals in STEM. Um, this study that is on the left-hand side came out in 2021, the beginning of 2021, and uh, displayed that LGBTQ plus folks are the most likely demographic to leave STEM, to not feel welcome in this field because of the vast amount of discrimination. And the further you are adding intersectionality, so the further you are uh, adding on top of that as far as your identity, right? If you are a woman, if you are a person of color, if you have a specific religious background that you can uh, see visually, the further you are adding things on, the more likely you are to leave this field, the more likely you are to feel that discrimination, to feel unseen at panel events, right? To just not believe that this space is for you and therefore leave. Um, and so at this point we have statistics, we can see it. And as I said, our ocean took place like three weeks ago, less than that. And that's still what we're dealing with to this day, right? So I don't wanna leave you with like disparage. Um, so this is me speaking to uh, some White House representatives and some representatives from Canada. And I brought these issues up uh, first and foremost. I said, hey, this is, this is not an okay space for the majority of people. Um, and I have been following up with these people. We are taking actions to try to move forward, right? To make these spaces more inclusive. So there are things being done. I don't wanna leave you with, you know, feeling despair. Um, I love this photo. This was um, the first time at our ocean. So our ocean took place over two days. It was very, very, very hectic, but this was the very, very last day, the very last moment after the closing ceremony, the youth took the stage to take a group photo. And this was the first time out of the two days that there was diverse representation on that stage that you could probably look around and find yourself represented on that stage, right? So the youth are the people, the youth are going to be there. The youth are going to bring that diversity. We just have to get them on that stage, right? We have to get them out there. We have to get the people that represent us. Um, sorry, my family's outside um, mowing the lawn, you know? That's, that's, the, that's the part of virtual uh, seminars.
Um, so in order to do that, in order to get those people out there, this is just a list of suggestions. Um, but one of the things I think that you can do is, as I said, reflect on your identity, reflect on who you are, what pieces that of you are really important to you, and then find creators, find advocates, find people that are doing those things that you might see yourself in. Um, this is a list that I was featured on this year, so the Climate Creators list. There is one from last year as well that's linked on the same page. So you can start kind of going through this, find people that you like, follow those people encourage those people, um, raise their voices, because the more you, you are raising their voices, the more you are supporting them, the more likely they are going to be in that room making those decisions for you, right? And again, this is just an example list. There are thousands of people out there, so many advocates, and I don't expect every person to rally and come to a conference and, uh, you know, stand your ground. But if you just go out there and support people that are more diverse, you are doing an active amazing part. Um, so yeah, that's, that is what I'm going to bring today. I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration. We can see the problem, but we can see there is a solution. Wow, Mackenzie, thank you so much for that. I am like fired up right now. I don't know if it's just me, <laughs> but I am fired up because you touched on the core things that you know I, I i keep on smashing i keep on speaking about and it, it, it's sad because in the spaces you have felt like you are being a nuisance to to keep on bringing these things but it's a matter of there's no change and i always go back to how things changed during covid yeah. if we can change the whole world like that during covid things can change it's a matter of political will it's a matter of priorities, you know, and I, I often feel like, especially with these conferences, people go there with already preconceived ideas. They don't care to hear about us. It's, it's just a fashion thing. And I remember thinking, why should we continue going to the spaces? Why should we continue having these discussions if we're not going to be heard? If we're just having another cop? Do you get around? But anyway, I'm excited. Thank you. Uh, we are running out of time, so I need to introduce the next speaker. And I'm super amped up for our wrap-up uh, discussion because I have written so much that I would love us to get into. So thank you for your time, Mackenzie. All right. So our second speaker is Elise Joko. Elise is from Tofimbaba <laughs> in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Currently, she is pursuing her advanced diploma in nature conservation at Nelson Mandela University. She is also a research assistant in a wildlife ecology lab. As a young woman, Elise is deeply committed to the conservation of both marine and terrestrial ecosystem and is strong and is a strong advocate for empowering women and promoting gender equ equity within the conservation industry. She firmly believes that women's voices, expertise, and creative thinking are essential for effective ocean conservation, and that their adaptability makes them a valuable resource in tackling environmental challenges. Elisha is a passionate advocate for leadership positions for women who have often been historically oppressed and silenced. Her topic today will touch in contributions women have made in the ocean conservation industry, highlighting the treatment they encounter and being undervalued in leadership roles. Elise, take it away, Sissy. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, as uh, Sopo introduced myself, I'm Elise Joko from South Africa in Topimbaba. And okay, let me start. So gender inequality in ocean industry is equivalent to climate change that we as a country we are facing today. So it can be very challenging and disturbing. So now it's time to take an action to address this and come with possible solution. So as my topic, I'm going to be um, tackling on the contribution that women have made in the industry. I'm going to be tackling on um, the treatment that they have encountered and also being undervalued on the leadership roles. And my conclusion will be, how can we come with solution 
on this matter. So firstly, as we know that women have contributed a lot in this industry, ensuring that they're protecting our natural resourcing, uh, resources despite of the um of their time despite of of the pandemic like they work so timelessly to make sure that they are conserving these natural resources however their effort has been taken under value and no one um, i'm sorry it's just this you know i just received a call so let me continue so I was saying that um, their efforts are not being taken serious and they are being taken for granted. So they've been treated uh, most of the time as assistant more than being in leadership roles. So you will tell me in South Africa, how many women have you seen being in leadership roles? How many women have you seen maybe riding or being riding a boat? How many women have you maybe in terrestrial industry have been there on leadership, leading people? people on how to maintain a fence. Just those general things, you, you won't see them. So they are treated as people that cannot take innovative decision. They are treated as people that cannot be critical thinkers. They Everything that has to do with women, especially in South Africa, they are not being treated fairly. And the policies that are, are there are not uh, being Oh, I think I think her network is it mine? It's not mine. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I think while she is recovering, let's jump into some questions um that we have. Um, are there any questions, uh, Bikram, from the chat that I might have missed? I think Su Su Suwangi has a question. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Uh, okay, yeah. So um I this is just like a very basic question and almost used as a rhetoric by so many men I see on the internet. And just like I think in day-to-day -day conversation also, it's just like as simple as like what role can men promote like play in promoting gender equality in ocean conservation and you know how can they become better allies to women in the field so I do think about this but yeah I would love to hear from you Mackenzie or Alil if you're here um how can men be better allies in promoting gender equality in ocean conservation I think men can just speak up you guys men have the floor to speak up I think that would be just a just saying like when you're going to these conferences or when you're in these spaces just being one what are the policies for women in this space how are we protecting the women that are working at this firm or working at this at this working in this lab because a lot of the time that we don't see women in these spaces is because of the discrimination and sexual harassment and sexual assault that they are enduring right that's I'm reading a book right now called the exceptions where so many women thought thought for so long that we were the exception to this you know we were experiencing discrimination and we're the exception nobody else is experiencing discrimination but that's not the exception right that's the rule we, we recognize that now so if men are in these spaces they can go hey how are we protecting the women that are in this office in this lab how are we doing that and then two when you're going to conferences and you're going to things hey who are who are we sending to speak? Are we sending a diverse group to speak at this conference? Or is it me and five other men? If it's so, I'm gonna step down from this role and ask you to fill it with somebody who will better represent the diversity of our workspace. So just kind of speaking up in those spaces, right? Like you have the power to speak up, use it. Yeah, well, that sounds about right. And I think also like um, just like understanding the difference in equality and equity also like men did not understand a lot of times and like I think the crux of it comes down to like oh we want uh, equality between men and women and just feel like uh, a lot of them don't understand that we have to come to equity first to come to equality like we want an equal world and for that we have to start with equity so yeah cool guys thank you so much I know we're running out of time um Elisha is your network back Okay. Is, are you back? Okay. No. I yeah, think I think full. Are you good? Okay. I think if you yes, are able, I'm back. If you are able to 
do a, a mini wrap up in two minutes. That would be really great so that we can just jump into the, the questions. And uh, we, we want to respect everyone's time. And um, yeah, thank you so much. You can continue, Elise. Okay, sorry guys, yeah, for disturbing. So I was in the conclusion and solution of how can we solve this problem? So I think we should um, start by telling young women that are still in primary school that you can do this, you can be leaders, uh, you have still have time to take those roles. We still, we also need to also do a lot of environmental education where we as women stand up for each other because sometimes it can be us trying to demolish each other so women we need to stand up together and try to make sure that we stand up for together to ensure that this is not happening anymore we're fighting this over also the policies that are there in workplace we should make sure that we read them and we should make sure that they are applied if it's not that we should address this and also we should empower women's represent, representation and leadership. We should also fund women's organization. We should make sure that there's funding for women's initiatives and organization. So as I'm ending this, thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak as, as much as the network tried to distract us, but thank you very much for listening. Oh, thank you so much, Elisha. And thank you for powering through through the network, <laughs> trying to find the right position. Hey, uh, technology, hey? <laughs> uh, yes, and I, I absolutely love what you mentioned about basically modeling the roles for, for the young um children. You know, being the people, be, becoming the role models that we actually wanted to see in our time, but becoming those role models now and not just far though, but actually be in the ground as well so that they are able to interact with us. Because I think one thing we can all agree within the space and how we women feel is the fatigue of continuously feeling like you have to fights and you have to prove yourself and you have to work hard you know more than the other person because all of a sa sa Sunday I it's a term I use but like you feel like your work as much as you're bringing 150 in the workplace but then you feel like you are being questioned more or you you know you have this scope in you trying to double check everything you do that you do correctly and those type of things are really exhausting and it really adds to what Mackenzie also said and and, and Shabangi that like we end up um women leaving the space and that's not what we want we want to be in the space we want to see the representation because this is all our space this is our ocean and we belong in it so i want to get in i can talk a lot so if you have any question please raise your hand i know i have a lot but please don't let me stop you raise your hand or write it on the group so that we can have a discussion and we can get out with concrete solutions and answers and actionable um things that we can do I see someone on the chat. All right. Yeah, there is a question in the chat, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bikram. Um, so that Adriana, Adriana uh, is asking, what are some concrete ways we can support youth who will bring a diverse amount of perspective to the space? All right. So I think I will give that one to uh, Elise. I think you, you touched on, 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 on women things. So why don't you take that one and then we'll go to McKenzie. So the question is, what are some concrete ways we can support youth who will bring a diverse amount of perspective to the space? Oh, okay. So firstly, we need to educate youth about um, the leadership roles of a woman and we need to educate the youth about science and we need to take the youth there in the industry and them to expose them on what the industry is we need to be open and honest to the youth and how what is happening on the workplace because as young people we get surprises when you get to the workplace and then you don't really find what you were expecting you think maybe it's this is a diverse area whereas it's not so we need to be open and honest about it we need to find them ways where they can also be able to address stand for themselves because um we as a woman we are so intimidating and men they get very intimidated when we're on those places and we need to 
make sure that we continue intimidating them. So yeah, we need to give them, uh, yeah. <laughs> we need to be sure that, yeah, we support women and they need to know that you don't do a mistake when you are there. You do what you're actually supposed to do. So yeah, I think I actually Thank responded you. to the question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Elisha. And I think it's 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 like this, like what we're doing right here. Big ups to you, Shibangi. Um, this is building community. You know, this is is building a, a safe space for people to be able to talk, for people to be able, you know, to share and 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 you know, advise and mentor and all of that. So I love such spaces. Okay, so I have a question for you, Mackenzie. While we're waiting for questions, guys, please ask questions. Or if you want to even say anything, please go for it. All right. So, Mackenzie, what are the changes you think need to be addressed to fast track these changes? Or actions that need to be taken to fast track? Because, yeah. Okay. To fast track these changes, I, I mean, I think the biggest thing is we need funding. Um, we so often expect youth and minority groups, um, as we just said, women experience so much diversity, feel like they have to go 150 when men go 100, right? And then we're like, we want you to do all of that for free. I want you to go um, and represent and be discriminated and make you feel really small and have men speak at you for two days straight for free. Sound good? Um, and that's, we're not going to get anywhere, right? We pay for all of those men to be there. We need to also pay for women and minority groups and youth to be there. Um, I think we have this thing right now, particularly with the youth, um, which is of course where we're seeing the most advancement in this, uh, industry is with our youth leaders. Right. Um, but we do this thing where we're like, we're going to call you a youth delegate and we're going to give you this fun title. And uh, we're gonna make it seem really cool, but we're not gonna pay you. And we're gonna expect all this work from you, um, but we're not gonna pay you or support you or do anything in any of those degrees. We're just giving you this fun title. Um, we need to do away with that. I, I don't need to be called a youth delegate. I need to be paid to be there. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that would be the biggest way to fast track more people being in this space and making it more accessible is genuinely giving people funding to do that. Because most most people do not have the ability to take two, two and a half weeks off work to travel across the world, to go to a conference, to stand up for, for their community. Most people don't have that ability. So we have have to make make it possible by giving them funding <laughs> you keep on hitting the call Mackenzie like literally yes because I literally wrote here stop stop making youth women as tokens we're not tokens because that's what you see we it feels like we just need to look pretty and that's it and also, secondly, what you touched on, it's exactly it's true when, you know, we we want to go represent, but practically it, 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 it's not. First of all, have you seen the registration, like the amounts of registration that is expected for you to have? And secondly, and that's a registration even virtual. That's not even you going to that, that place. And obviously you want to be in the space so that you are able to stand and speak and network with people and like just let your voice be heard. And those things are really made impractical. And I know most of them always say like we, we put funding out and stuff, but it's usually su su such small funding. And I was having a conversation with someone recently about something similar in a sense of the reason that we are still fighting each other is because the resources are so limited. It's it, we, we become like a dog chasing a bone because there's this one small bone and we are, do you know what I'm saying? There's so many of us, but the, 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 the opportunity are so slim and we end up fighting against each other or not, you know, supporting each other in the spaces simply because we are mentally framed as we are competitions like of each other, but we're not. So, oh man, okay. So 
I don't know if there's anyone else that would like to chat. I'm just gonna read some comments. Um, Shubangi says, um, I think as women, we have this inside voice constantly yelling if we deserve to be here, and a lot of you know, and a lot of back and forth. That is so true, Shubangi, because of how like the spaces, the, the the spaces are not cultivated for us to feel comfortable. The spaces are cultivated for us to be uncomfortable. And when you shake that, and when you find your inmost role to shake that, you are attacked and you are literally physically attacked. And that is something that I actually experienced <laughs> last year. Because once you, you push through that, and then, yeah, but anyway. Okay, there's another one that, oh, it's Shibangi. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. Everyone, I, just got a, any, I just got a question directly asked to me. It said, how can we stay mentally and st uh, strong when working in ocean conservation field? Um, rough. <laughs> that is a big question. Um, I think one of the best things that you can do is, for one, have a support network. Um, it's, you know, I, I found it so big when I was at our ocean and I was feeling really discouraged to be able to walk away and have a couple of friends be like, hey, you just did a great job. Like what you said was really impactful. Like you, you I know that you felt drowned out, but like just having that five minutes for your friends to be like, hey, you're amazing. You're great. I support you. Those things. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I can do this again. I can, I can go and I can do one more round. I got this. I got this, you know, having a support network, even if it's not in person, you know, you let your friends know like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing this talk today. And they're like, I, I'm so proud of you. I believe in you. Just having that is so groundbreaking, I think. So creating a support network for yourself for one is the biggest and will make sure that you're not burning yourself out. Um, and that was kind of my next point is make sure you're not burning yourself out. Give yourself give yourself leeway, right? Um, we are in a big fight. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This is a long, long sought out journey. I got, you know, I get back from places and I take two days off. My computer goes away. I'm not, I'm not dealing with ocean conservation for, for two days. You know, the world can wait for me to have a nap, you know? Um, so make sure you're giving yourself a support group and make sure you're also taking care of yourself. Biggest things. Absolutely love that. Thank you. And thank you to whoever um, asked that question because it's so true and it's so real. And I think also one of the things is like, uh, the world is big. Ocean conservation is a world on its own. It's big. Okay. Uh, don't try and, and, and fight everything. <laughs> You're going to be exhausted. Find your niche and just continue. And tribe guys it's so true Mackenzie like if you don't have a tribe you really because we are already the minorities in the space so if you're not finding that tribe you it will quickly get to you I know so many people that have quitted after so much work that has been put simply because it's too much and they couldn't bear it anymore so and I, I said this to a friend and what she said to me actually shocked me because I said, you know, we're doing this and we're not doing this just for us, but we're doing this for our, for future generations. And she's like, yeah, we are. But like, why do we have to do that? It's like we have this big fight in our shoulders that whatever we are doing now, as much as, yes, we know that's going to benefit the future generation, but it's all right to also do it for you. So the, the messaging from that is enjoy, enjoy your time now. The, you know, and, and the positive things that you are doing now will definitely create a wave for the future. So as much as, yes, we are future minded and we know that, you know, we need to ensure that there is a future for the, for, for the next generation, but you are the generation now and all you have is now. And it's important that you, you know, you, you devil in that and you enjoy yourself in that and you enjoy the growth and, and everything that's happening in your life and enjoy nature and the ocean. Um, okay, so we are running out of time. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Sofu, but I think that reminds me of the thing where I read this on somewhere like last week or last month, something around that time. It just said like, uh, we're working today so that there are no women who have to work in this line of work uh, 100 years later from the, today. 
So yeah, we're working today so that uh, nobody else has to in the coming years work for gender equity in ocean conservation. It is there. It be have world which is equal, and yeah. So I want to appreciate uh both our speakers and you, Sofu, for moderating the session so beautifully today. All of your expertise and experience have shed light so much light on the challenges that women are facing in the field and like have obviously provide us with valuable insights on how we can work together and overcome these obstacles so yeah a big cheer out to all of you over here who have joined today and for sharing your insights with us um do we have a minute to answer one more question oh yeah sure we all right today to answer all these questions so please <laughs> ask them uh, this one, Elisha, are you still here? Is she here? Okay, so this one was dedicated to Elisha, but uh, Mackenzie... Uh, I, yeah, I think point. because of her network, so she's gone. But maybe I'll ask a quick quick question to Mackenzie. Um, like, in many societies, there are still, like, um, women are lagging behind, I mean, because of this inequality, right? So my question would be, like, what would be your uh, advice or suggestion to those women uh, who are interested in um, ocean conservation, but they're not getting the support from their family and friends? So, yeah. That is such a tough question. Um, I mean, one is to also re reflect, like, do is that weight and not like, can you carry that weight? You know, you, you don't have to go up against a fight that you cannot carry. Like that's never something that anybody's asking of people. I think that we, in this space that we are constantly encouraging women to get more into the space, to have more equality, to do all these things. We're constantly pushing, pushing, pushing. But also, as we said earlier, we have to be real with people. This isn't easy. It's not fun. You, there are days that you're just crying <laughs> and it hurts and it's not, it's not great. Right. Like there are moments that you feel so impactful. There's moments that you're standing on the stage and you're like, wow, I did this. And that obviously makes it feel all worth it. But there are also moments that you're like, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And so being very real about with that and like really reflecting upon that is something to do. I know that's not necessarily the most encouraging, but it also is reality. Right. Um, and if you do feel, okay, I don't have the support of the people around me, I don't have the support of my community because I'm a woman in this space and they don't trust a woman in this space, I still want to move forward. We do funny live in 2023 where there is this space, right? And this space is so impactful. And when you find people that are similar to you, when you find creators or advocates or environmentalists that are similar or in similar positions, then you can create this community online. And that can might be really impactful and really helpful for you if you're not getting that in your daily life. Um, so I would say to, to venture out into the digital world if, if you can. Can I just add to that as well? Because that kind of touched home for me because I was in that boat. Um, I think two things, Ne. Uh, one is to, as you know, as Mackenzie has said, this is not easy. As much as it might look so cool and so fun and everything, it's really not easy. Behind the scenes, it's really not easy. And I think people also need to be open in a sense of that you don't have to be full-time in it. You can do whatever you're doing and still be in it. We actually need more people, for instance, that are in accounting have with a, a, a conservation mindset, people that are doctors with a conservation mindset. That way we're impacting a diverse, um, you know, um, reach than just like ocean conserva conservation mindset, if that makes sense. So I think first of all, um, we also need to be open to that. And maybe even in our talks, touch on those, that you don't have to be full-time um, in this industry you know, we, 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 you can still make waves, not. And secondly, um, you know, family and community things is really close to the heart because obviously that's, that's your heart, that's your rock and that's your world. Um, and, and, and not everyone gets the support, as you said, you know, to actually pursue a passion. And sometimes it's different reasons. Sometimes um, in, a, in a South African context, it's, it's finances, the fact that you are working, 
so that you can support your family. Now, let's be real. This industry is not paying that well. <laughs> so for you to be able to support your family, you, you end up realizing that, hey, um, um, I might not be able to be full-time here, but maybe it is your passion. Like me, for instance, this was from the get-go. This is what I wanted to do. And it took time, but you need to be very patient with your people and your community as well, because it is a almost like a weird thing because people it's 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 new it's arising people don't think that you could do this as a full-time thing they think okay go be a doctor go be an engineering go be in it and now you're coming as a what is that you know so we need to be patient with people also and our parents in in in, in the in the transition and it might it might not take a year or a two years but I've reached also, I'm a testament of, I've reached a point where I'm supported now, but previously I was not. But because I knew this is something that I wanted to do, I stuck with it. And also that makes you so resilient to the challenges that you you, you, you encounter within the space because you realize what, what what's at stake. Not that you're proving yourself, but you've fought so hard with your rock, with your heart to be in the space and therefore not someone man or whatever will come and shake me otherwise so i just wanted to 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 highlight those two things and i hope that helps um elisha is gone again so i'm gonna ask the question and then whoever <laughs> answer can answer again so if you can i know we've been <laughs> using you a lot <laughs> please do um but um the question is basically what advice do you have for young uh, women who are getting started with marine biology yeah, industry. I think we touched um, on it, but <laughs> yeah, I first and foremost check your university's policies and uh, ensure that they have things to keep you safe. Uh, first and foremost, always. Um, I can't tell you how many universities do not have policies that if something happens to you, if you're a remote worker, as marine scientists, we do a lot of remote research uh, that. Uh, highly highly increases your risk of some really awful terrible things um so many universities do not have policies to what happens if those things take place a lot of them will protect the perpetrator over protecting the woman they'll send the woman home leave the perpetrator at, at the research field uh, because there's no policies and they can check your policies go to your university and say what are the policies to protect me? Um, because you you need them. They need the and if they if they don't have any, start start fighting for them. Gather gather the group of women that are in the space with you and go. Hey, I, I just found out there's nothing to protect us. Let's fix that together. Um, and then that's kind of like my next point is find that community, find other people in your field that don't just have to be women. They're, they're men that will support those as well. Make friends with those people because you need the allies. You need the men that are going to be like, I also support this. We also need this. So create a group, create a network um, to have that support and to push progress forward. Oh, I love that. Okay, so guys, we're going to do a, a thing, <laughs> okay? So remember the question that we asked in the beginning, okay? Uh, so basically it's, as a leader in your country with the power to influence policy, what steps would you take to promote gender equality in conservation? So we're going to give you two minutes, okay? You write that on your chat, you don't send it. Note, you don't send it. Write it on your chat, and then we're going to do a countdown. Okay, and then when we do the countdown, everyone's going to press enter and then the answers are going to come. Okay, you have two minutes, think about it and write it and then we'll do a countdown. But while that is happening, well, Mackenzie, like I am so actually thank you, Shvangi, because I am going like, I'm going to follow you now. You're cool. I like it. I like what you're doing. Like, it's really well, amazing. Like Obviously, like I knew this would turn out to be so good, but I didn't think like this, like the last one hour, obviously we went ahead, like we crossed the time limit just because we were having such meaningful conversations and not just even meaningful, the entire atmosphere over like last one hour has been so wholesome. So I really appreciate it. Like this has been so much more better than I expected it to be. And it's just because like, again, it's a like safe space for all of us to discuss and what we feel like. And yeah, just a very comfortable space. 
and each one of you has contributed to that. So yeah, thanks to everyone. Yes, thank you everyone. Thank you for everyone's thank like really you. insightful, thoughtful questions as well. Super appreciated. And I think it's 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 important to note that this does not end here. You know, um, also, if if there's maybe a pressing, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, Shubangi, but if there's a pressing thing that you would like us to talk about within the space, uh, speak to Shubangi. And then maybe, you know, we we identify people that we need to bring so that we can talk about this um, topics or like a question, like a certain thing that you would like to address and stuff like that. Because uh, as we're saying, it's really important for us to be there with each other. It's really important for us to mentor each other. Or to identify mentors, to you know, to create a sisterhood, um, where you know, uh, if I go to Canada or whatever, I meet you. I don't know if there's a Canadian here or wherever. You know, we 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 instantly, you know, become sisters because by how slow things are changing, we'll probably be the only one of us that are there. You know, so um, and it was so beautiful the picture that you put um Mackenzie the last picture and you see you see the change like you literally see it and you ask yourself why are you like for instance why is youth not in the seat you know because even like something that happened at APEC last year and um they it was an afterthought it was literally all we had was about two hours they were like oh oh uh, we don't have a youth representative. Let's find some youth here. And then they came and they found youth. And it's like an afterthought. Like, you've been planning this, you know, and you can see we're not in their mind. Women are not in their mind. It's just like, oh, we'll just make them feel special there. And then in the actual thing, you, you can literally see the voices are not valued. And that's something that we need to be vocal and be bold about. And the minute you get that, that opportunity, You'll be bold. <laughs> You'll be bold because we, we need to make those statements. All right. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Uh, that reminds me, uh, Mackenzie, Alicia, and Sofu. It would be amazing if you guys could share your LinkedIn profiles, like just link to that in the chat so that like, if people want to reach out to you after this, um, they can easily do so. Yeah, I was going to say that if anybody has questions afterwards, I know that a lot of us walk away from these kinds of things and we go, oh, I really actually really thought about that. Feel free to message me on any of the social medias. I am pretty good about getting back. Um, and usually those questions actually help me um, talk to other people and I'll talk about them publicly because then if you have a question, there's a guarantee that like 12 other people have the same question. So <laughs> please come ask. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much for everyone for being here, for taking your time. Let's grow this community. Let's bring other people here so that they can experience what we've experienced today. All right. Countdown begins now. You guys ready? You're just going to press enter. Okay. Three. <laughs> two. One. Press enter. Let's go. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Come oh, they're coming. Oh, they just hit it. <laughs> Whew, okay, let's start. Shubanga says, gen uh develop gender responsive policies and uh provide training and capacity building for women. That is amazing. Is someone noting this? Um, Bikram, will you please just um make sure all these are noted? Uh, because I know they're going to Oh, it's recorded. Okay, never mind. All right. Mackenzie, as a leader in my country, I'd ensure gender equality by ensuring women receive the same funding and pay rates as men. Yes, love that. Um, and therefore reducing the imposter syndrome, they often feel and empower them. Amazing. Um, Oshadi, raising awareness, constantly creating and proceeding with taking action in ocean conservation, educating others. Yes. Uh, Lenny, speak up for myself and fellow women, queer people, uh, POC, I'm not sure which one is that, sorry, uh, and anyone in a vulnerable position. Nice. Set aside specific spaces for women. Mm, where am I? For women in ocean-related fields. Love it. Since we are in a democratic country, we can still change what is written on the policies 
and ensure all are protecting us and policies are followed. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love there, it. Thank there's, you. Sorry to uh, yeah interrupt. There is one very at the top from um, Suanita. Yeah, I think you missed that one. So. Wait. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now I, I found it. Thank you. Uh, when making policies, I believe those making them should be fully represented on the board so that they make meaningful policies. Yes, I also believe women that have made it should be there for those that are new into the environment advocacy space so that they can mentor them and become strong. I, right. you guys are amazing. This is all amazing. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much for being here. And um, yeah, let's continue this and let's continue the chat. Uh, Shibangi, do you want to yeah, close? Yeah, this? I'm going to take a screenshot. I want to capture all of your lovely faces and just capture this entire moment before we all go. So I would appreciate all, all of you to just like quickly turn on your cameras for a short second. And Vikram, could you just like uh, wrap up the screen chat? Thank you so much.